you everyone for having me today. If you were not um, at last week's LinkedIn 101, and if you didn't get a chance yet to view the recording, I highly recommend you go out to the Oregon Library's website and watch that recording on YouTube. It's a solid hour on all things LinkedIn. It's very detailed. I go over home pages, your profile, good things like that. Today's session was really meant to be more of a Q&A so that if people watched last week's session, went back, tried to do some of the stuff on their own, or maybe they're just already pretty familiar with LinkedIn and they just have some questions in terms of how they can use it to their advantage for networking or the job search. That's what today's meant to be. So it's very casual. I don't have anything pre-prepared. I'm just planning to go through questions and then you know, if people don't have a lot, we can always wrap up early too. But if those of you, since it's a smaller group, I do like to have things be collaborative um, if people are willing. So if you want to share um, and unmute yourselves and just tell us a little bit about you and what drew you to this presentation today and anything you're hoping we can cover, that would be helpful. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, definitely please try to put one or two questions into the chat um, because that way we can make sure we address them. And if anyone's willing to be a guinea pig, if you're like, mine is my profile is just a mess, I'm not sure what to do about these things, I am more than willing, if you're open to it, to pull up your profile on my screen, or we could have potentially you share your screen as well. Um, if we're not connected, I may be limited in what I can see on your screen, but I'm I'm happy to do some ad hoc feedback live as well. So I want to make sure people get something out of this today. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. Do we have any volunteers um, that would like to tell us a little bit about themselves? I'll open up the chat so I can see it here as well. So it looks like um, a few questions that came in via email is that um, making sure we cover how recruiters and hiring managers seek candidates on LinkedIn. This one's a great one, and I'd be happy to do that. And then how can we make our profile align with our competitors? That's a really good one as well. We can talk about that a bit. And then I want to make sure I pronounce your name correctly, but we have a volunteer for being a guinea pig. Um, it's July, you... like July. Hi, Nikki. July. <laughs> Hi. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. July, like July. Okay, good. I'm making a note of that so I don't botch it. Thank you, Galai. Um, yeah, I would love to have a guinea pig because I think um, when we do, it's just so much more informative for everyone. And so let's start with these questions and then we can always go into um, Galai's profile and I'll try and pull her up next. But let's just address the first, which is how do recruiters and hiring managers seek candidates on LinkedIn? The truth is it varies. Some are really, really active on here looking for candidates and others don't at all. If you are a company that's known for having an amazing corporate culture, um, speaking locally like Promega does not probably have to go on to LinkedIn and look for their average candidate. Um, however, the more narrow your field, so example, if you're like a software engineer and there's just a huge need for them and it's a role that can be remote, you may have all sorts of folks out there looking on LinkedIn. So typically what happens is it first depends on what the market needs are. So if a company um, back in my day when I worked in HR, if I had a hard to fill position, I would use this search feature for what we were looking for. So like if we needed for instance, um, a reg registered nurse with a mental health focus. I would search in based on the keywords of what I was looking for, for that position to fill and search for it. So let's just try that. That's This is not something I've ever recruited for, so I'm just making one up, but I wanna see who pops up. So I would search and it pops up. And you start to look at the people and you look for folks that you can potentially reach out to. Now, I don't have this feature anymore, so I can't show it visually, but oftentimes recruiters or hiring managers have LinkedIn premium or even recruiter accounts, and that allows them to toggle and search from an even more detailed perspective. And in particular, it allows them to focus on candidates that are open to work. So I'll show you what that looks like just on my own profile. You can see here, I've clicked, if you do your open to, you want to make sure, mine's doing hiring, we don't want that. I can remember how to do this since I'm 
oh, it's down here, open to work. So your section may look a little different than mine, um, but essentially there's an open to work section. And when you click edit on that, you can put in job titles of things that you may be interested in and what types of positions. And this will allow um, recruiters that have LinkedIn Recruiter to find you. I highly recommend keeping this up to date. Um, I have all sorts of things on here for me. I'm always interested in part-time contract opportunities. So I keep that on here and I will say, this has worked really well for me. I started my business probably about five years ago and I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. And I currently have two contract opportunities through two different um, third-party sites. One is placement and another is Mentum. And they actually found me on here and encouraged me like, hey, we think you'd be a good fit for these open career coaching contract roles we have. So the goal when it comes to LinkedIn and recruiters is that you want to make yourself as marketable to them as possible to find you. Now, when I say they found me on here, part of that is also probably because I'm highly active on here. I have over 7,100 followers and I follow a lot of the top influencers in this field and I comment and I give thought provoking, you know, feedback, or I don't wanna say feedback, but thought provoking, um, perspectives on posts they may share or facts they may share and things like that. And so that will get some engagement and some online dialogue going back and forth. That's more or less how these things have found me. I've also had, when I did more resume writing, I don't do that as much really at all anymore, but I would have resume writers reach out to me to contract for them because at one point, I don't have it now, but um you can have the open to work banner, I'm trying to show how to do this quick there. Maybe they're not doing it as much. It used to be, if you had it, I'm gonna show you how that works. That's really interesting. Oh, here it is. If you click all LinkedIn members, this allows everyone to know you're open to work. And so I had that up for a while just because I wanted to play around with it. And I did get a lot of folks reaching out for subcontract opportunities. I always advise my clients, if you're currently unemployed, it I would put this on there. I definitely would make it public because when recruiters are searching and they're using recruiter, they, when I was doing it, would sometimes focus on candidates that were open to work. And so if you have it marked for only recruiters, it still triggers to the recruiter, hey, Nikki's interested in opportunities. So like, if you reach out to her, she wants to hear about it. Versus if you have it for open, that's going, I'll just do it quick so you guys can see what I mean. That's what puts this fancy open to work on your profile picture which anytime you're engaging on LinkedIn will draw attention to the fact that you're open to work. And it also from a recruiter search perspective will make it easier for people to find you or it will flag to them that you're highly interested in work. Now I'm gonna take that down because I'm actually not open to a lot of work at the moment. So I'm not interested in getting some of the spam that comes with that. If you're in a really um, competitive field like software engineering or something where you're just getting inundated with recruiters reaching out. I wouldn't leave that on there. See, that should go away now. Let's see if it refreshes. Oh, let's fix that quick because I only wanted recruiters. I didn't click it right. Um, so hopefully that answers that question for that party. I don't think they're on the call today, but you're as valuable to a recruiter as their needs are. So if you are a registered nurse with mental health like um, emphasis and there's a heavy need for that type of work, it's probably likely that you'll get hit up by a recruiter. I think right now, a lot of folks in IT, a lot of folks in healthcare, um, physicians, for example, are getting inundated with recruiters reaching out because in some rural areas, they're desperate to fill positions and things like that. So these, especially third-party recruiters that are working on a commission-only basis, they will use LinkedIn to find anyone and everyone to try and work a job lead. For the average candidate, it varies. If you're in a field where they're getting thousands of applicants and you're barely getting interviews as it is, I mean, you may or may not get found on here, but my suggestion is 
at least have your preferences on there and keep them up to date because what does it hurt? And this is what they call casually looking. So let's say you just started a new job and you're liking it, but you're thinking, I don't know if I wanna be here forever, but I don't wanna go through the whole job search process again. There's, no sh there's nothing wrong in keeping this up to date. And in fact, I would encourage everyone to always keep this up to date at all times, because if a recruiter reaches out and you're not interested at that time, you can at least let them know that, but network with them, have them keep you in mind for future openings. I think anyone who's going through the job search process and has had to like play just this draining game that can go into it, always regrets not starting their networking sooner, regrets not kind of keeping some of those options open sooner. So this is one easy way to be a passive candidate to see what starts to happen and if anything comes across your plate. So hopefully that answers how they do it. Um, how can we make our profile align with our competitors? That's an interesting question. It varies so much based on do you necessarily want to align or do you want to focus on how you differentiate yourself from your competitors and why someone may want to work with you? I'd probably argue there that rather than aligning with them, I'd definitely take a peek at what your competitors' profiles look like and what types of things they emphasize, but I would focus on what your niche is and how you can best serve your customers so that you're attracting the type of customers you want. Mine um, is very different than a lot of my other colleagues because I only work part-time, so I kind of make a point to put that in there. I'm not out trying to hustle employees and third-party subcontractors and things like that. Some of my competitors are. So they talk about their teams and some things like that. Um, I'm more of a minimalist, so I have more of a simplified approach to my coaching. So I put all of that in there because those are the types of clients that you know tend to benefit the most from my area of practice. So for that question, I would really look at if you were to be out there advertising anywhere on social media or the newspaper or anything, what do you really want people to know about you? Um, I think that would be helpful. I think my other suggestion there is keep it real. Really use the first person I statements, tell your story, how did you get into your business? Why do you love your business? Why are you passionate about it? I think those are things that people really like to see and appreciate. So I hope that that helps on that one. So um, Jilla, <laughs> I knew I was going to do this. <laughs> I'm going to have you bring your profile up and I wrote it's, it down. It's don't worry. It's Galai. 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 <laughs> yes, Galai. Let's bring yours up. I'm going to yeah. pop it up in here quick and then we'll go through yours for a guinea pig. Yeah, the lie. Okay. I apologize, Perfect. everybody, but my daughter helped me. She's more pro than I am, and and I have um, I can give a little background so that everybody knows. Please do. Yes, please do. So first of all, um, uh, Nikki, I I got your name through Laurel. Oh yes, so, yes, yes, so, yes. You know, just wanted to tell you, I I met her in August, so yes. I love the community of amazing women and men out there. So. Uh, here we go. Thank you for this. I did miss the last session. So I will go back and, and go to the Oregon library and look it because it was my son's 16th birthday. So we have to celebrate. That's really for a big sure. One. For sure. And, um, so who I am. So this is kind of interesting. I am 50. That is not an ex excuse that you're not fit with tech, but I'm not fit with tech because I am um, a very fit, busy physician who does um, uh, translational research. And I just spun out my, my company and I'm going to leave the university soon in order to be the CEO um, full-time for the company. So in the interim, you know, when I started my career as a physician, I just put up this, my name and I was in Wisconsin, that was it. Mm -hmm. And then since then I have really hardly logged in or put, put um, any updates and you can see how anemic it is. But then in the interim, I have learned for any career that networking is just part of your job. And mm -hmm. in, in academia, we're really not taught that. So there's a lot of lessons that I have learned. And especially when it comes to um, a startup where things are really busy and you will need to find a lot of good people. But that's exactly, I am, um, every, all the questions asked today are spot on my heart. But for me, where I am at is um, maybe that will help everybody else and maybe everybody else is much more advanced than I am. 
I don't even know how to represent myself, especially for people who don't like to talk to them about themselves. Mm -hmm. And I am not a person that I think I, um, I see a lot of LinkedIn profiles, which look amazing, but I always wonder like how much of that is really, really, I mean, we make it sound sometimes better than things are. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe that's part of marketing, but I'm just as who I am. I'm pretty without makeup, you know, but I like to represent myself. So this is where I am. And I don't even know how to do that or, you know, how to, when somebody looks at it, see who I am in a. Okay. I like it. So let's back up and I start all clients with this. I'm assuming, but correct me if I'm wrong, your goals with a profile are, are they for networking for customers, for investors, or for employees, or for all of the above? Well, you, um, very fantastic question. Uh, short term right now for investors, okay. because we're starting our seed round. And so you're absolutely right. But down the road, um, you know, I'm also recruiting amazing people you know there's always going to be a small team at first in a startup so um, that is for sure also you know uh, important networking I think it just comes with it in a way but mm -hmm. um, in a startup that's right now not as much my focus but starting to pitch is 200 to 200 investors I think it would be nice if they you know have this first everybody goes to LinkedIn at first Yes. And that's a great point. One of the first things I do, like my son, just he invited a bunch of people over Friday night before the home football game. And we don't know all of the folks yet. So the first thing I do is is Google people just to like help put together a face with a name, not because I'm trying to like stalk them or find out anything, but it's just helpful to know, like, do we have something in common? I can chit chat with like when they drop them off or pick them up and that kind of thing. Um, so I definitely think LinkedIn is one of the third first things that pops up whenever anyone Googles you. So if for no other reason, especially when you're going through funding and things like that, you definitely want to have a strong profile so that it really looks professional and backs up what you're selling. So um, that's fantastic. Tell me a little bit more about, is it Airflow? Yeah, Airflow, the way okay. exactly it's a wordplay, you know, okay. so, um, and, and as you can see, I don't have the University of Wisconsin up there because I don't know how to add it. So I played around and there's all these, but you know, I will, I will still be uh, affiliated with the university, but okay. I will not be employed. I will have an affiliation, but will not be employed by the university during that time. And what does Airflow do? So Airflow is... Um, a medical device startup that is creating a respiration monitoring system wow. for healthcare workers to give uh, continuous and real time feedback about a patient's um, breathing changes, especially wow. when they're going through sedation. That's amazing. Okay, so I'm going to go through and give you some feedback based on that, and I may have more questions. So, and all of this will apply to any of you. So whether you have a startup or if you're sitting here right now thinking, um, I'm working as an office coordinator, this is like so over my, you know, I just, I'm a year out of school. No, all of this will apply to you. So just bear with me because think of it as an investment in your career. So the first thing we'll just start top to bottom. I would love to see a background photo here that ideally represents airflow. Given the fact you'll continue to have the relationship with UW, but you are benefiting in the sense that UW gives you a lot of credibility, but you are not someone that has to worry about non-competes or anything like that. I'm assuming, correct? Yeah. Um, so I would definitely have it represent airflow. And so if you have a logo, if you have something like that, I'd want to see that here. And ideally, I'd like to see your logo with like the tagline of like, what is airflow? Because as soon as they click on you, that's the first thing they're wondering. And I want to see that like very short, like with, you know, helping with um, health respiration monitoring system. I mean, we'd have to play with the words that I can't quite do off this quickly on like an ad hoc coaching, but I think hopefully you see what I mean there is they'll see airflow, they'll see a logo, it looks professional, it looks legit. 
And then, oh, what is airflow? And you answer it right away because that's the first thing they're wondering. So that would be my recommendation for you. For those of you that maybe don't have your own company, I do not recommend putting your current company here. I only recommend that for owners or sales. Now, if you're in sales, I want to see your current company here because you're selling your company. If you're on the job search, I may want to think about changing it to something a little more neutral. Um, but if you're happy in your job and you're out there hustling, sell your job here, sell what it is you're selling. Um, and a good place you can do this for really easy and cheap is Canva. They have like a free version. I would just do it on Canva. If you don't have an official like marketing team or a third party helping you with that, um, that is definitely something you can throw into Canva and it's really easy to do. And I definitely recommend taking advantage of that. In your case, I would love to see an updated headshot because you are going into funding and looking for investors. I think having something that's representative at that level would be really helpful. And for most folks, I do recommend having an updated headshot. There's a gal out of Australia called the Headshot Wizard. She will take pictures that you take on your phone and make them much more professional looking with a very fancy background. And she'll do editing and enhancements and things like that. For folks on a budget, I recommend her. She's like 50 bucks. She's totally worth it. Um, for you, July, since you're in the Madison area, I know one gal just had one posted. She has a couple of Friday sessions coming up. Her name is Olga Dobbs. It's D-A-U-B-S. She has ones that I think are really sharp and she may be a good option for you. I think she was advertising 150, um, but I know there's folks that are probably kind of between that 50 and 150. There's also folks out there that will take your pictures, put them on your website and do a whole marketing campaign for you. And if you need some folks like that, I can give you some names offline, but I feel like the salary wizard and Olga for anyone locally, those are good options um, because prices can really kind of run the gamut. Um, but at least if you have a phone, the salary wizard's a great way to do it. So um, let's see what else I'd like to see. Okay, so your, your headline here, I probably, instead of um, CEO and co-founder of Airflow and the professor at UW, what I'd like to see here more is like what you do. Like I probably would like to see the a bigger focus on why are you so passionate about starting this medical device company and how is it going to change the world? So that's super, super hard. It's easy to give that high level advice. When you sit down to do it, you could literally waste hours doing this. So my recommendation is to look at other founders and see what their headlines look like, especially in the medical device industry and find some that you feel comfortable with and start playing with that as a rough draft and then and then see where you can come. That's a very, a much more practical way to come up with something than just from scratch. For those of you who are not a founder, I still would like to see where are you going? What are you doing? Um, so for instance, if you're in HR, it would be more focused on general HR and why you love working with people and why you're great at it. Um, if you're pivoting, I'd want to see your headline really focus on pivoting into sales and marketing, you know, after a strong background in accounting, whatever it is. Um, this should never be your titles. It should be really specific to either what type of position you want, or in your case, what you are bringing onto the market and really selling that in terms of like, here's what we're doing. So really heavily focused on how it will make a difference um, is what I would focus on there. Keeping Madison's great. Let's click on your contact info. I would recommend everyone keep their contact info as up to date as they feel comfortable. I keep my cell phone number on there because I want clients to find me. You better believe when I was in HR, my phone number was not there. <laughs> I didn't want anyone calling me at home. Um, so it depends. You can also customize your LinkedIn URL. If you Google it or look in their search features, it will walk you through how to do this. I would definitely recommend doing that and even shortening it to your name, shortening it, you know, your name may be taken, but shorten it to something so you can get rid of these long numbers. And the nice thing to know is that 
you could put this on the bottom of your business cards and that I would definitely recommend doing, or you can also create a QR code in LinkedIn that you can print that on a business card or put that on a resume. And that's a really helpful way for people to quick look up your LinkedIn as well. So that's, those are small things, but tying those into email signatures and really starting to take advantage of adding more networking connections and really tying in your LinkedIn as sort of like your little black book, so to speak, of your network is helpful. So the more you can market these source, these small things, the better. Um, so then I don't see your about section, and that could be because we're not connected yet, but I'll... Um, let me just write something down here quick. I'll give you some examples on I, I don't have it. I haven't, I haven't even attempted to write about myself. So you're okay. right. Good. Let's look at mine quick and then we'll go back to yours because yours can be outstanding. Like yours is the ideal about section. Um, mine is like, hi, I'm Nikki. I'm here to save you time. And I would love to see something similar for you. Like, hi. I'm July. I'm here to change the world, change healthcare through, and you insert your company's mission. And then you can do similar to me after, you know, X number of years at UW working in healthcare and doing these things. I saw this, you know, amazing market opportunity and need for patients. And so here's, here's what I did. Here's what we're focused on. Um, and you could probably even get into, you know, we're looking to I don't know as though I'd want to put right out there you're looking for investors, um, but you can at least focus on here's the things that my company is going to be really strong at, really excited about this. Do you want to learn more? Let's network. Let's get together. Here's my email. In your case, I would maybe recommend setting up something like a Calendly.com to make it really easy for people to reach you. For the average job seeker, I would not recommend something like that unless you're really at the top of your game and you're just getting inundated with recruiter outreach. But if that's the case, awesome for you. Um, I want to hear your tips as well. A lot of times that just depends on the field, but um, certainly for anyone in sales, marketing, business development, founders, um, that kind of thing, having something like that right there so people can get time on your calendar and avoid any back and forth is really helpful. I have some fancy formatting in here. There's a website that I shared in last week's LinkedIn 101 that will show you how to do that. You can just copy and paste words in. You can look up fancy bullets, things like that. I would love to see you do some formatting, make it pretty, not probably as busy and crazy as mine, I'm marketing to people about LinkedIn, your field's a little more traditional, but you can take a peek at some of these other founders and CEOs and folks like that to get ideas from there. So that would be really helpful as well. So now we're going to go back. And then I love that you have your current position first and you have CEO and co-founder and that you have the company here, I want to see more about the company here. So in order to get a logo, which I would recommend you doing, is you can create what's called a company page. And then that company page will have you fill out some basics about the company and then allow you to attach a logo. So I'll go back to mine to show you an example. I have Ryberg Group right here because I created a company page. Now, this is really helpful advice too for anyone that's maybe on the job search, but they have a gap in employment. Maybe you've been doing a little bit of consulting. Maybe you only did one side project for your uncle for free, but you want to make yourself look a little more credible on LinkedIn. You can go ahead and create a company page, throw out a logo for your LLC or your coaching or consulting practice and throw something out there. I've seen a lot of folks do that um, returning to the workforce. A lot of moms or dads that took time off and just sort of dabbled in freelance work. And they're like, okay, I'm ready to get back out there. I've been doing some things, but how in the world do I tie together 10 years of dabbling? And it's like, well, let's create a company page, throw it out under an LLC, and then talk about what you did there. Um, so that can be really helpful too for folks that are on the job search. So we're going back to this one. 
So things I'd like to see July would be more about the company and what you're hoping to accomplish. If you've hired any employees, I'd love to see that in there. If you've had any growth, if you've had any, um, if you're able to share how much investment you've gotten, things like that would be really great here. So doing your homework to compare it if there's been other either similar or just other startups you've admired from like kind of those earlier stages, take a peek at what they have right now. And that can be a really good starting place. And then if you need someone like me is always here um, offline as well, we can always chat more on like the big details of it, but hopefully that'll be enough to get you started. Now, assistant professor at UW, that I definitely want to keep on there and expand on. So I'd want to know like, what were your subjects? Like, what was your average class size? Um, did you have people doing research under you? What was your focus? I probably would say right in there how you're still affiliated with UW, even though you're you know, leaving to do this other thing. That affiliation is so huge when it comes to some of the networking and connections. So expanding that would be really helpful as well. I'm gonna go back out and look at mine um, because we would definitely want to see you add in your education and don't put your years uh, just for age reasons, once you're a year out, you leave that off, but you can put in all of your degrees if you have any certifications or anything like that. And then if you have any volunteering, um, that's always helpful too. And then in your case, I would recommend taking a look at recommendations from patients, from people who reported to you. If you're looking at this someday for a potential recruiting tool, having a couple current or past employees say you're great to work for really speaks volumes. So just starting to expand on the recommendations would be key. And then the other thing in your case, and this really goes for everyone, if I hate to say it, but if you have a quote unquote fancy connection, get them to give you a recommendation. Let's say I have someone right out of college and they have a really like they babysat for someone who's really well known in their industry. I mean, I put their name out there, put their recommendation out there because names and connections matter a lot. So even though someone sees you're connected on LinkedIn, it's going to speak a lot more volumes if they see that they actually vouch for you and gave you a personal recommendation. So that would be really key from like healthcare frontline workers really working with it, other doctors, other nurses, um, things like that would be great. So that was a lot. Let me go back to yours and see what questions, because I feel like I make it sound easy and then that triggers 80 more questions. So what questions do you have, July? <laughs> uh, yeah, completely. So first of all, thank you. This is a great 50,000 foot view intro in terms of like what matters for the first look, right? I mean, the, I mean perception is the, the key. You know, they, they have five minutes, they have less than five, they have 60 seconds you know, they're busy people, people are busy in general. So thank you for, I think, keeping it concise and what matters. I think um, the one thing I would love, there's many more questions, but for me is a lot right now, it's just a lot of uh, how to do, you know, like I have so little time and there's so much that I need to learn how to do. It's not like necessarily that's difficult. It's just, you know, I barely can, I just I right. don't have enough time to learn everything and I think so the next question is what would you recommend for me um you know how can I get it up to speed like what help is out there um, right yeah so that's a great tip so I used to write these for people I don't anymore I coach them through how to do it and we kind of go back and forth collaboratively and this goes for anyone out there on both Fiverr and Upwork. There are other writers out there that will do this for you. I can recommend her name is Bonnie Nigron um, with Bonnie's Career Services. She's out of the New York metro area. She will do these for clients. And in your case, she's definitely worthwhile to check out. She would make it very professional. It would get done quickly. And she would ask you lots of good questions and just turnkey like it would be finished you'd get a chance to look at a draft and then just get it out there so I think in your case I would recommend that um, for other people where that's just not a possibility maybe budget's an issue then I would recommend you know going through and trying to do some of the stuff on your own and potentially looking at a coach that could help you there are writers on Fiverr and Upwork some of them are you know far cheaper than others it's kind of one of those things you get what you pay for um 
there's, I don't know anyone offhand on LinkedIn, I would recommend some cost just, I mean, some are charging thousands of dollars, but um, Bonnie is very reasonable and she's very good. And she works with a lot of folks in the finance industry. So I feel like she really has a, would have a strong sense of your ideal person in terms of investors. So for anyone else, um, trying to think what else I would recommend. You can always have a friend that's a recruiter or someone else look it over, give you some feedback. Um, but hopefully that answers that one. I think in your case, Bonnie would be the go-to and tell her I sent you. Yeah, I, I was just typing, do you have, um, I, I wrote it down, it's, do you have a, a link? Um, is it Bonnie? If, bon if you Google Bonnie's career services, oh, it will Bonnie. pop up. Yep, and it's Bonnie Nigron and it will let you set up um, a calendar up like link with her right away using Calendly to get on her calendar for a consult. Oh, perfect. I can drop it also for everybody. I just saw it. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's um, great. Thank you. As, as I was doing this for her, did it trigger other questions for some of you guys out there? Okay, pull up the chat quick. Oh, that's fine. Hi, Nikki. Okay. Hi. Nice Laurel. I do have a question. Um, can you speak to like getting LinkedIn uh, link requests from basically people you don't know maybe they sent you a message like hey I want to connect but it's like it's almost like I some of these I see I'm like does this even add value because I have 800 connections and like I don't want to add people just to add people I mean that's just kind of my perspective I want to see what your thoughts were I would agree. I think unless they go to the effort to write you a note or give you a reason for why they want to be connected, I get hit up by so many spammers, especially in foreign countries, countries that I have no business doing any coaching, like their markets mm -hmm. are entirely different, all of that. I've started ignoring them. Like just having a high number doesn't do anyone any good if they're not relevant to your needs. So That's, I would just yeah. click ignore. Yeah, now, if, and if even they don't some, know you. sometimes some people will send me a note and be like, hey, I wanted to connect. And I can see that they do like, you know, maybe they're some type of engineer, but I'm like, I'm still like, well, what value are we adding to each other? Like, even if we both so some people I I will I, I kind of I kind of take each one and, and think about each one. I don't automatically say no but like a lot of times I won't I won't do it if it's just somebody that's kind of doesn't give me a good reason you know yeah and I would agree with that um when I first started my business I connected with anyone and everyone and I've sent ones out um at different points of the business just to try and grow my network and but I always sent a message and explained why and mm -hmm. I was never offended if anyone like said no, but I think there's, especially as females, like I've had so many weird things that I'm just like, not only do I not connect, but if they seem like strange, I hit block. Cause I'm like, yeah. I don't even want you around. And I think that's a very appropriate strategy case by case. Now, if it's someone in like a field you're really interested in, or you can tell they're a recruiter or a hiring manager, I'd probably advise like, well, maybe think about it, but never force yourself to do anything that just feels uncomfortable because it's not going to get you anywhere. Um, so it should really be a network that you want to see their stuff and you want them to see yours. Can you also talk a little bit about working with recruiters? Because like, I, I'll be honest, I, I do not like recruiters. Um, I, I kind of see them as like, a middleman I don't really want to go through them and whatever but like are is there advantage to working with recruiters like you know I mean, or I, even just connecting with them like I I just I don't know I maybe uh, I don't know maybe I I have a, a different perspective than than a lot of folks but I just I just I value networking myself because I think I'm the best person to say I know what I want and to to network my way to those connections rather than you know sorry my 
things going on um to network myself to those connections rather than like going through somebody else and they don't really know what I want you know that sort of thing yeah I would I also know that you're good at networking so in your case um I would totally agree with that approach and then oftentimes I have clients or friends who think that recruiters will get them out of networking or will get them a job easily so they don't have to put in the work and the thing about recruiters is there's there's a couple different types of recruiters there's first of all the internal recruiters who are handling internal positions for a company let's say like promega here in madison like they work here they're assigned to a certain number of hiring managers they're posting the job ads they're screening the candidates they're working very closely with the hiring managers on their needs i do think those recruiters can be very valuable to network with because they will oftentimes know when a position may be coming up that's not yet posted so if you have relationships with recruiters at internal companies that you really like and would like to work for, it could be helpful because maybe they know they're posting a position in January that's not public yet. And if you've had that relationship mm -hmm. with them, you might be front of mind. That's what the secret job not network is. When people talk mm -hmm. about networking and secret positions, it's things like that. It's just like you're in the right place at the right time. Um, I do recommend working those relationships. To do that, you first have to identify companies you're interested in or keep an eye out on folks having growth. Like in July's case, she may not have positions out there right now, um, but I'm sorry, Julie, I, I am so bad. I like some people can't do faces. I like botch names. It's so embarrassing. I'm no, so you're sorry. Amazing. You're doing great. Do not <laughs> okay. worry. I'm just like, oh, but so in her case, uh, if someone knew she may want to, he or she may want to work there in a few years, they'd want to start networking now. There's There'd be no shame in that, but it's a slow game. Um, but so there's also the second part is recruiters who work on a third party basis. They are typically either experts in a certain industry, like I used to follow one who was really big in the transportation industry, like big, like leadership type of roles, CEOs, those sort of things for like trucking companies. He was super active on LinkedIn. A company would know he has this stellar network and goes really deep in transportation. So when a big wig leaves, they may just go right to a recruiter like that. They don't want it posted. They don't want to go through the runaround. And they're going to typically pay on average 25 to 30% of the first year's salary to place that person in a role. So the really good ones are worth knowing. So like, for instance, if there's really strong ones that focus in civil engineering, like in your case, or if there are ones that really focus in um, startups or things like that, it's worth to know them because again, you will be front of mind when a position comes up. But oftentimes there's a lot of third-party recruiters that are just like, they have to pay the bills too. So it's just like, this company's desperate, somebody quit, didn't give notice, didn't show up, they posted a position, and it just becomes kind of just this, like, I don't know how to describe it, but it just becomes a little less of a strategic process and more of a tactical. Those yeah, ones I'll describe it. It's a waste of time. <laughs> yeah, those <laughs> ones, like the more tactical ones, are probably only worthwhile if you're like, for instance, if you were returning to the workforce after a 10 year gap, I would tell you, go start with a staffing firm, see whatever they can give you, throw your way, just get your feet in yeah. the door so we get some relevant experience. But for folks like yourself that are further along in your career, I don't think those are really worthwhile. I think absolutely, hands down, hiring managers are the way to go. They're the way to network. Um, because ideally, I'll tell you, I don't know any company that's ever excited to pay the finder's fee on those recruiters. So if you have a relationship with a hiring manager and they can avoid them, they're always going to want to do that every day of the week because that's a lot of money. Yeah, it is. And I, I actually I have an interesting perspective because in my previous role where I was um, uh, a manager um, at a at a engineer civil engineering company um just like a you know first level manager um i was working with a couple of recruiters to try to you know bring in um you know engineers um uh, was kind of a uh challenging um well just these times these times are challenging but you know even the last five years it's been challenging 
um, certain markets to hire people, hire good people. Um, And so, you know, was kind of like working with a couple of firms and uh, my experience was bad on that side too. I mean, I, I had a couple of firms that like did not give me hardly any leads, maybe gave me like a couple leads and they weren't really that great. So my kind of, that, that's, that's probably the, the more kind of a generalist type, type of hiring firm uh, or, or sorry, recruiter. Um, but more of the um, interest that I like what you just said though, like, you know, get to know some, some recruiters that are really, really well known in the industry and like really good. Um, and, and that, you know, maybe the go-to for firms that are looking to hire, you know, at a, at a, uh, a high level of the firm. Absolutely. And so. recruiters are like anything else. I've had that too on the HR side. I remember one, um, we were, we just couldn't keep a receptionist to save our life. We didn't pay well. We didn't have great benefits. And, um, but she sent me someone that like literally could not open Outlook and like a big Mm -hmm. part of the job was just like getting Outlook emails and forwarding them to the right person. And like, they could not like point and click their mouse. And I was like, this isn't going to work. And she's like, oh, she just needs more training. I'm like, no, I, I sat down with her for like 30 minutes. Like I'm just expect, and so I'm expecting a certain minimum to be met. And oftentimes they get paid when they place someone and depending on their docket, it's hit or miss how much they're equally invested into really it being a partnership. Mm -hmm. So if any of you ever do need to work with ones, I have ones in like the Madison area I prefer over others. And then on a national basis, I would have contacts I'd be able to ask as well. But For those of you out there, I think your time on LinkedIn in particular, it's helpful to reach out to some recruiters. It's helpful to follow the ones that you can tell really know your industry or your field and get connected with them. Like there was a gal back in the day when I worked in Minneapolis that had left a big company there and started her own recruiting firm and everyone knew her. I mean, I knew her because I had first interviewed with her right out of college, but she was just that good that a lot of folks in the HR space in the Midwest, like they all knew her and she was worth knowing. Um, So you just have to find those ones and kind of weed out the ones Mm -hmm. that aren't worthwhile. Um, But I think when Mm -hmm. it comes back to LinkedIn, using it to search for people that are hiring managers or are in roles that you're interested in, and connecting with them, but then following it up with an offline Zoom coffee or an in-person coffee if you're both local. That's really where the magic happens. I mean, it's great to get lots of likes and comments, but most people that engage on mine, I have some type of typically relationship with. Sometimes it's online, like I'm commenting a lot on their stuff, they comment on mine or we met at a networking event and we were both like, oh, you're nice. Like we're both normal, um, things like that. So it still has that human element. I think it's very helpful for fact finding and for confirmation. So like in July's case, it's going to be in Goliath's Goliath's case, it'll be helpful for an investor to be like, oh, wow, dang, like this startup is legit. Like she knows her stuff and like, I want to speak with her, um, comparing it to a profile where they're a startup with a high school education, no connections, and they worked at McDonald's. Not shaming McDonald's, I worked there in high school, but you know what I mean? It's that sort of like the fact finding, the confirming, that's where LinkedIn really pays off. Now, in order to get more folks interested in you, it is helpful to put posts out there, to publish articles, to try to really be a thought leader um, in your field can do wonders for helping drive up your engagement and get recruiters interested in you. So that was a very long-winded answer to that question. Um, What else? Great question though, Laurel. Any other ones? Does anyone else want to be a guinea pig? Nick, you can do mine if you want. I I know for a fact there's stuff I need to update on there. (laughs) Let's do it. Oh, I like your background photo. 
that that's my parents dog I, I don't oh. even know if I should change it or not <laughs> I like it for now because it's very like real I like it if you were trying to get funding and investors I would tell you to different direction but I think for now I like it especially because you're in water um I think that's helpful so I'd like to see your about section be longer really like tell your story of why did I major in this in college where have I bounced around working what am I passionate about where am I hoping to go in my career how do I hope to really make a difference in the world and in terms of water um, and then in your case to help recruiters find you a little more easily I'm trying to think okay I'll, I think I'm going to pull up different person's profile so Dr. Kyle Elliott I've never met him, but I follow him on here and I really like him. He's super smart and good at the career coaching and writing space. He will, um, I don't know if he does it as much. He used to write resumes and profiles for folks, mainly in tech in Silicon Valley, but he went back to school and now I think he's doing more like group coaching and like larger scale stuff. Anyhow, if you go down to his recommendations, this is where I always look for profile ideas and click on there's a few of the older ones where you can tell that like he probably did their profile just based on like how beautiful it is um i don't know for a fact but i'm just guessing she might have had hers professionally written so she's got this great background photo really nice headshot talks about she's head of buying but some key things here so this isn't as relevant to you but she talks about her background using I per, uh, first person statements, like where she's been, um, confirmation, she's been at some good companies in retail, her expertise, then with a history, you know, where she's been as a merchant and seller, where she's hoping to go. But you'll notice down here, she has executive assets. This is another key area. Um, when recruiters search for things they need, they'll typically type in keywords. The more keywords you have on your LinkedIn profile, the more likely you are to pop up on their search. If, for instance, a recruiter is searching for someone remotely on a national basis, your competition is like millions of potential people. If it's the state, it goes down a little less. If it's local, it goes down a little less. Or maybe they're looking for people open to reload. That's something you can um, always provide in something. But anyhow, where I'm going at with this is the more you can weave in what your areas of expertise are on your profile, the better. And this is a really easy, pretty way to do that. There is a, and I know I've told you this one, Laurel, but for the rest of you, there's a site called Job Scan or this other one is skill sinker. It lets you upload a resume and a job ad, and it gives you a keyword score. You can do that with your LinkedIn profile. So you could actually up like upload a job description that you really like, and you could extract your LinkedIn profile to a Word or PDF document and upload that and see what your keyword score looks like. If it's super low, you'll wanna go back to your LinkedIn profile and weave in as many of those keywords as you can. And I would do the same from a company perspective. Like mine is just inundated with like resumes, careers, all the things I do to the point where it's probably obnoxious to someone else. But if someone were right now to type in like resume writer Madison, it's probably gonna pop up pretty quick because I have so many keywords on there. So from a search perspective, if clients or potential employees are searching for you or something like what you do, you want them to be able to find you. So having that keyword score go up will really help with that um, AI piece of the search. So that'd be my recommendation for you, Laurel, is to weave in more of that to help people find you more easily. Okay. That, yeah, that's really good. Um, and then I know like I have my experience on there, but I don't have a ton of description under some of them. I think I put a lot under Hazen, but. Yeah, I'd wanna see that get updated for your current yeah. positions for sure. Yeah. And mm -hmm. your older ones, you could probably start to shorten up a bit too, cause they'll focus okay. the most on the last five years. So 
Okay. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily take things off though, in your case, because you did have a lot of good like supervision and mentorship that they'll be looking for in some of the roles you apply to. So in your case, I probably would leave a lot of that on for now and you can always take it off like after whatever mm-hmm. happens next does, but definitely mm-hmm. getting um, LinkedIn is similar to a resume and that you want results on. So if you have something you can showcase, like I improve this training process by 20% or I reduce the administration time on onboarding by 20%. Those sort of things you want to get in there and then using that net um, formatting site that I sent that I gave out on last week's call, you can put in some of the fancier bullets or get into some of the bolds and italics and things like that. So you can always play around with that too. All Mm -hmm. of this said, nobody's going to like hire or not hire someone over like because they had an emoji on their LinkedIn or because they bolded something. (laughs) It's just all a matter of like you're marketing yourself. So you want to think about if someone clicks on my profile, will they want to talk to me for the reasons I want them to? And if you think that you're giving them enough reasons to want to talk to you, your, your goals and objectives are met. If there's not enough there, or if the recent stuff's not enough, you know, they may be wondering like, well, what's going on there? What's she doing? Or honestly, when I was recruiting, I just knew they were too busy. (laughs) It was like, oh, they're clearly busy in their role. But by having it up to date, it does give the indication like they might be willing to talk because they've kept this up to date. So they're probably passively interested. So that is one good reason to keep that stuff up to date, even if you don't yeah. have time. Because I know my husband has not updated his LinkedIn in probably like 15 years. <laughs> so I speak from experience. <laughs> and then I also like right now, I don't have my credential on there. I mean, I it's I put it after my name, but I don't, I didn't put it like on the official part. I do. would because some folks may because the only thing I mean I guess I can but the only thing I was like I don't know if I want like anybody and everybody to just have ready access to my number because that's what they do they put your number out there but that, it is public information if you go on the the state I'm certified in you can find my number there on the state's website but like I don't know I'll that's a great point visible only to my network or yes. something like so that. that's what I was just going to say yeah. um, I would put it just because some recruiters may toggle by only including PEs if they don't want to deal with someone that doesn't have a PE but I love mm-hmm. how you brought up you'd mark your settings so there's the settings and privacy feature that you can um, go in and mark like who can see what. I'm not gonna go through all of it right now, but just know you can hide anything and everything you want on your LinkedIn. So if folks go out to their privacy settings, feel free. Like when I first started my business, I was really hesitant to have stuff on the internet. I've I've gotten over it personally now just because Like I mentioned in the beginning of the call, I've had folks reach out to me to subcontract. I've gotten sites reaching out to me to coach on their platform. So once I saw how much it paid off from a revenue standpoint, I was more willing to, but to the average person or like when I worked in HR, there is no way I wanted certain people knowing things. So I was very careful about that. Um, So everyone will have to use their own judgment. Yes, go ahead. I just want to say I have to hop off to the okay. next meeting. I just put in the chat. Thanks so much. This thank was you so, so much. Amazing. Laurel, thank you for connecting me to this opportunity. I just loved it. Um, and thank you um, and the Oregon Library for, for hosting this. This is so helpful for us. Yes, thank you. And stay in touch. I want to hear how things go. Yes, so thank I can't you. Wait. Okay. okay. Yep. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, So definitely utilize the privacy settings to how you feel comfortable and don't be afraid to block people. So if you have, let's say a supervisor that would get super upset if you were active on LinkedIn, you could think about blocking them so none of your stuff shows up. And I used to block certain ex-employees that maybe might've been an issue or folks that were just sort of like really difficult and brought a lot of negativity to their life and everyone around them. I just block folks like that. And I don't even hesitate because it's just like, I don't want them in my space. I don't want them knowing what I'm up to. And I've, you know, had folks that are like, my boss is going to question why I'm so active on here. And it's like, well, you could block them so they don't see things, but you know, do you 
because that gets back to, well, gee, I wonder why you're looking then if you're working for someone like that, because a lot of folks don't use LinkedIn for jobs. They use it for networking and they use it just for like building their own professional track. So that was sort of a long winded answer to that. But I think definitely put the PE on, but you could even keep it completely private. Just that way, at least recruiters, it would flag that you have it. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see what else on here. I would see if you could get a couple more recent recommendations to ideally from like a client and okay. then a past supervisor would be awesome. Or current. Okay. When okay. you ask your current, then they start wondering like why, unless you're using it for like business development purposes, then they don't mind. But otherwise I tend to find that doesn't go super great. So you can always ask past ones, but in some cases mm -hmm. it's been so long since folks have changed jobs that that's kind of weird. Then they would just focus on clients and um, peers and things like that. Okay, okay. And then in your case, you could take your years of education off too. Now that you're more than a year out of school, that would be my- other Yeah, I think you mentioned that on the last call. Yeah, that's it. That's so interesting to me that like, you know, that once you're a couple years out, you take it off. Yeah, it's uh, ageism is a real thing. And the closer you get to 40, there's a legit reason why the EEOC marked that as something for age discrimination, because sadly, it really starts to happen. Um, so the more we can prevent that and people are educated on helping keep age and numbers out of it, the better. I don't think you need to really worry about that yet. You're pretty early on, but in time you can start to take off some of your older positions for that same reason. Yeah. Just, like typically tending to go back about 10 years. Well, and can't you just, I mean, I don't know if LinkedIn lets you do this, but like, can't, can't you just have like, okay, previously I served in the Peace Corps without the year or you have to put the year? Couple of different ways. You could do it in your about section, which is a lot of times what I recommend to folks with telling their story. Put the cool, like the exciting, like the things you want them to know like that in your about section and that way they don't know the year. Another example is you could create a brand new position and just entitle it like additional experience. And within the body, you could start to list some of those. And let's say like, I'll give you a real case example here. Let's say like, I would just put for the year, like 2010 to 2010. And I wouldn't really go, I wouldn't say it was from 2000 to 2010, because it will force you right here to pick some type of date in order to list a position. So that's mm -hmm. a crafty workaround is just to create a generic position, create like the most recent date, just do a one year time period and then talk about it here. Like you know, prior to the above positions, I got my, you know, start in the Peace Corps and then did these positions, or I've seen it as simple as, this is another fun one to follow. I had this on the last chat, um, but like in Adam's case, he's he's got a ton of followers and really big in the recruiting space. He did something kind of similar to what I'm saying here. He just did like vice president recruiting. He gave all of his years here, but he just listed like positions and years. He doesn't have the companies. We don't know where mm -hmm. that was at. I probably yeah. would recommend folks would do something like 2011 to 2011 and do titles and the names of the companies versus years, just because a lot of times those X companies can have a lot of credibility in a certain field and you don't want to lose sight of that, um, but you don't want to broadcast your age. So that's my workaround. Got it. Yeah. Like, I mean, I like that. So um, I'm not, I'm not probably ready to take, take it off. I, I may take the Peace Corps one off and put in my about, but I'm not probably ready to take these earlier ones off yet. Um, may, I may take out some of the description part and go a little bit shorter on the description, but um, um, AECOM has a lot of credibility uh, from my my perspective it's a very large firm and it's a it's a really it's a uh it's a really credible firm in the in the field and so you know i i do think i should still have it on my page that i work there you know 
I like that for now too. Um, yeah. I just noticed we went over the time, so I want to be respectful okay. of everyone's time. Yes. So we're going to end there. I could talk about this stuff for hours, but thank you so much to everyone coming today. I'm going to kick it over to Kara to end things. So thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.